the, the, the red one. Is that, is that there? Good. Okay. So let's have a class today, and uh, we will be go over the results from last week. Okay. Now let's go to the temperature first. Everybody should see you. four degree, twenty five degree, thirty five degree, and fifty five degree. Now you should see all you four degrees Celsius is nothing is grow there. Okay, that doesn't grow. Now anyway, we made a mistake. We put that, <laughs> we put that not in the four degree Celsius. We put in a frozen because it's supposed to be a four degree Celsius refrigerator. We have the marker which is four degrees Celsius, but somebody see the bottom is like four, so they put on the top, but top is a freezer. So somebody made made a made a mistake. So whatever it is, uh, nothing's grow. Okay, you see it's frozen, but anyway, four degrees Celsius, nothing's grow. Twenty five degrees Celsius, you should see all of them are grow. Now it's ideally you should see twenty five is only a little bit of grow. But because it's been there for like a week, so you see it should be exactly the same as 35. They all grow very good. And the 55, most of them should not grow. The only thing grow is bacillus. So if you all have bacillus, it's absolutely is growing there. If you have bacillus, you can check you batch partner or whoever has it. Bacillus is grow because bacillus is a thermophile. Okay, so bacillus is, is growing. Now let's go back to see the 25, the serocia. Did you see a both beautiful color there? That's a very red color. And the pink red, a very beautiful color. That's a serocia. And if you see 35 degrees Celsius, it's actually colorless. So you can see the results, okay? So that's something to go over with you really quick. Now the second, that's called the impact of the temperature growth. Now we're gonna look at your plates. Now you should know something there. You can look at your results, we go over real quick. First of all, we all have E. coli. Cinnamonas agrogenizer and the Staphylococcus aureus on blood agar. Then we said second one is the Macanki agar. We have E. coli. Cinnamonas and the Staphylococcus aureus. This is Macanki agar. And the last one is Manitou salt agar. So we have E. coli. Cinnamonas agrogenizer and the Staphylococcus aureus. This is Manitou salt agar. Okay, let's see your blood agar. The blood agar should be everything is grown. Should be grown very well. Okay. Can you look at your Staphylococcus aureus? This Staphylococcus aureus should be beta hemolytic. Now, how you do it? You have to hold on this, hold on the plates and look at the sun, the lights coming through, you see the transparent zone. For Staphylococcus aureus, that is better hemolytic, absolutely you can see some. And for E. coli, you may see some very light, very light beta hemolytic, but not that obvious. But Staphylococcus aureus is absolutely is beta hemolytic. Okay, everything is growth because it's a English media. Okay, we go Makankiaga. Makankiaga, you should see. Staphylococcus aureus is not growing there. Because it's a gram positive bacteria. So, no growth. E. coli and the Cinnamonas agrogenizer should both grow very well. But which one is pink color? Is E. coli. Now, I don't know you place right now because it's been there for a week. <laughs> it may be like a decade or something. It should be pink if it's fresh for E. coli. And the Cinnamonas agrogenizer is colorless because E. coli is a lactose fermentation positive. We'll mention lactose fermentation real quick. Okay, now we move on to manitol salt agar. You should see no growth for E. coli, no growth for Cinnamonas agrogenizer, and the Staphylococcus aureus should grow at its yellow color. Is that right? 
If it's yellow, then it's correct because mannitol fermentation positive. Now, it used to be, this is a question in the exam which you need to fill the table. Uh, this year, I'll become a multiple choice. It's easy. Usually, it's few, you fill the blank. Okay, that's a question be be before. This year, I make it a little bit easy. So, that's all the results. So, these three plates, as these three passages, there's a lots of story you can talk regarding enrichment media, selective media, and differentiated media. Okay, so that's the results. And I hope you recorded it. Okay, so we're going to move on to today's work. And I mentioned that we're going to move on to the biochemistry test this week. So some of them, I will also be talking about here a little bit of lecture, which means a little bit expanded. Because uh, uh, in the lecture, I have a Zoom, which is slides. It's not that detailed, but here we're going to do the experiments. And we also going to be talking about those de details. OK, so you should have a fact sheet. Biochemistry test one, which is have four biochemistry reactions there, and you have another one, which is uh, extracellular enzyme activity. So we're gonna do, do these two. So today you have a uh, lots of tubes there, lots of plates there. You have to label very well. That's the first thing. Remember, okay? So we're gonna talk about th this. So biochemistry reaction, biochemical reaction. So number one, bacteria can use biochemistry reaction because most of the time there is a substrate and the bacteria has an enzyme. So they generate a products. And this product most of the time is like a gas, like a small molecule. And most of the time is the color change. So, and you know the enzyme, which is low down the biochemistry reactions, the energy what they needed. So the energy is delta E is decreased. That's why it's will let it happen real fast and real rapid and quick. Now, because of bio, a bacteria has lots of the enzymes, so they can go through process, generate the products. Most of the time we see a gas, we see a color change, we know what a bacteria it is. So, Biochemical reaction is used to identify. Is used to identify bacteria. But I tell you, it is about 80% accuracy. Because lots of the bacteria, their biochemical reaction could be exactly the same. So that's 80% accuracy. Now what are those, another 20%? We need to use molecular methods to identify. We're not going to do here. So you have another like a molecular class in downtown campus or, any, or anywhere. Okay. So that's a basic idea. Now we want to do something here. So first to test what we're going to do called a three tube fermentation test. Okay, before we're going to talk about this, we want to talk about fermentation a little bit. So we have a sweet tube. I first of all draw here, which is glucose, lactose, and sucrose. So we will, we will, we're going to mention this later on. We're going to first talk about fermentation. So first of all, what is fermentation? Now you know fermentation when you eat yogurt, cheese, those are fermentation. Is that right? That's a fermentation product, generate acid. So it tasted a little bit acid. When you see the Swiss cheese, you see those corn there? That's a carbon dioxide. So there's a gas generate. So what is fermentation? Now remember, in the lecture, what I mentioned, we talk about the electron transfer electron carry on energy for bacteria to use during their transfer so what means fermentation the best definition is if electron donor is organic and the electron acceptor 
is also organic chemical. This is called the fermentation. Okay, now at this moment, the electron donor, pyruvate acid, pyruvates, and the electron acceptor, usually it's lactic acid. But it could be ethanol, we'll mention that later on, okay? If the electron donor is organic chemical, the electron acceptor is also organic chemical. That is called the fermentation. Now, if electron acceptor is inorganic chemical, this is called respiration. And then, if this inorganic chemical is oxygen, this is called aerobic respiration. If it's the inorganic chemical is non-oxygen, is other other than oxygen. This is called anaerobic respiration. Okay, we will mention these two later on. But right now, what we focus is this corner here. This is called the fermentation. Okay, now, what the really the fermented best definition this is? Second question, what is fermentation really talk about? Fermentation is completely anaerobic. So, no oxygen. No oxygen. Now, what is going to happen? There is two fermentation, two types of the fermentation. Number one is basically is pyruvates will be reduced to lactic acid. Now, of course, it happened is NADH oxidized to become NAD plus. This is, happens very often, and this is what we call homo fermentation. This is what you happen is in, in the cheese, okay? Now, you like beer, is that right? You like those alcohol products, what happened? We have a pyruvate. We'll generate ethanol or alcohol. This is called hetero. Fermentation. Now, during the pyruvate to become ethanol, there is a second product. So what is that? Acetaldehyde. Now, when you go here, this is also have NADH reduced to NAD plus. Okay. So this is a fermentation. Now, when you see here, these NAD, which is we call it electron carrier, it is very important. These NAD plus electron carrier, they must be recycled. Otherwise, the bacteria will be died because you don't have a carrier for energy, okay? So these are the two things. Now, the second, third question. How many ATP generated during the fermentation? Only two ATPs generate through fermentation. And going through, we call it substrate level phosphorylation. Now, where they comes from? We have glucose going through this guy, what is called? Glycolysis. Then it goes here or here. So where these H2 ATP comes from? Comes from glycolysis. So, glycolysis and the fermentation is actually coupled. 
So they only generate two ATPs. Okay. Now there is a lots of project pro, projects will be products will be generated during the fermentation. You know lactic acid we mentioned acidic acid. Where is acetic acid? The vinegar is that the vinegar is acetic acid. Okay, lots of the girls like to use a nail remover, which is you get one bottle from Ultra or like a Sephora. That's a little bit expensive because that's a fermentation from Australia. And you like Swiss cheese? Is that, is that right? Swiss cheese where you see those cones? That's carbon dioxide. That is coming from probiotic acids. Uh, all probiotic bacteria. There's a lots of the bacteria can go in through that, and I'm going to talk about that in the lecture. Okay, but here is something we mentioned about the fermentation more briefly right here. Also, you like a beer, is that right? There is L. Remember, you have L. What is the other one? Is that called the lager or larger? I don't know. What is the L? That is called the top fermentation. So you see the color is actually light. Is that right? How about lager? Should be called lager, okay. How about lager? They're called the bottom fermentation. So you see the lager, usually the color, what is that? It is dark, is that right? So that's the difference. We talk about, these are usually talk about in food chemistry classes, more detail, okay? So that is talk about the fermentation. Now what are we going to do today? We will be testing the bacteria, whether they can do fermentation. So how they do? Okay? We have, Rachel, you have to adjust that one. We have a switch. Go ahead and put it up adjust it. You're going to get this sweet tube. This sweet tube is called the king cap tube. That's very easy to broken down. So I call it number one accident in the lab. Very easy to fall down. So must use rack. Okay? This sweet tube, which is re represents glucose, lactose, and sucrose. Now, bacteria will generate acid, lactic acid. You know that. Uh, we're not going to test alcohol here. Okay, alcohol is another story. So, how do we know there is a lactic acid generate? If these solution turns yellow after incubation. Because inside there is a phenol red. This is a pH indicator. Phenol red at a low pH will turn yellow. So when you see it turns yellow, which means the lactic acid is generated. But sometimes during the fermentation, they also call the generator, we call it some OH1 hydroxide, and that which is called alkaline products. Which means the pH will be higher. Now the phenol red will turn cherry red. If the pH is higher. Okay. So they go two directions. That's a pH in the indicator. So this is to test the acid. Now I mentioned lots of the time the biochemistry reaction will have a gas generate. How do we know there's a gas? If you look at this very carefully inside, you see another tube there. This is called a Duran tube. This inside this tube is called a Duran tube. Now how do we know there is a gas generator? After incubation, if you see a bubble, that means gas generated positive. So we usually write gas positive. Okay? So what we're going to do today is very easy. We have different group. We will inoculate different bacteria. Then we will see the results, what it looks like. Whether it has a gas generate, whether it has acid generate, or it has a alkaline generate. Now, very simple. You add the bacteria there. Of course, you have to label. Then you add the bacteria, inoculation. And they use your loop, and every time when you do, you have to flame it to prevent the cross contamination. Okay, so this is the first one, which is we call sweet tube fermentation test. So that's the first one. So I'm going to talk about fermentation now. Second test, which is called the urea test. 
I left it here for you so you maybe can see it uh, if you're still confusing. And we will be assigned the bacteria later on. So first is the fermentation. Second, we're going to do urea test. Okay, the first thing, urea usually is in liver. You have a high amount of urea is in the liver. What is urea? This is urea. If bacteria has ureas, Look at that, ASE is an enzyme. It will generate ammonia and the carbon dioxide. Okay, this is a very important reaction for some of a very high risk bacteria called HP, which is a heterine pyrrhine. Acronym is HP. This is a bacteria that will cause stomach cancer. And lots of people will have to do screening test because the urea is in the liver. Most of the time, the stomach, the stomach, we do not have much bacteria because the pH is very low. It's about 1.0 to 1.5. This is killing all the bacteria. But this guy, we're using urea because it has urea, so break down become ammonia and carbon dioxide. This ammonia will be neutralized. This low pH. Then, usually we call it buffer to pH 5 to 6. So, this HP can be survived. How you test the HP? Get some of the stomach for fluid. If you see the HP, three plus turbidity. You have to use antibiotics immediately. Okay. Now, how do we know a bacteria has a urea test positive? If this tube turn pink. Because in this urea tube, we also had a pH indicator, which is phenol red. Once the phenol red comes out, it can be seen whether you generate ammonia. And this ammonia is weak alkaline. And this weak alkali environment, this phenol red will turn pink. So we just mentioned about this. This is phenol red. It's a pH indicator. At the pH 7, it's just a red. At the pH 4, it is yellow. At the pH more than 9, this is cherry red to pink. Okay, so that's urea. Now, urea test is very easy to do. Not difficult at all. This is the urea tube. And you put the bacteria inside, we'll see the color change. It's very simple. So you got to inoculate. Okay, not difficult at all. So that's a second test, it's called a urea test. So the test of what we're going to do is called a catalase test. So we will do a third test, it's catalase test. So first of all, what is catalase? This is something you know. Bacteria will generate H2O2 during their fermentic process. If the bacteria has catalase, they can be hydrolyzed, become water and oxygen. 
This oxygen is actually is like a bubble. So catalyst test is very simple. We will do a neutron argon. Split the plate onto two sides. Like we did be before, left side we add Staphylococcus aureus. And right side we're going to add E. coli. Then after growth 35 degrees Celsius 24 hour, we will be pour H2O2 there. If you see the bubble generate, you see bubbling, that means oxygen just comes out, which means the bacteria has catalyst. Now catalyst test is very important. Why it is important? I did not mention in the examination too when we talk about the pathogen. We have Staphylococcus. And we have a Streptococcus. What is the easiest way to differentiate that? If we know one way or the other, is catalyst test. Because Staphylococcus aureus is catalyst test positive, Streptococcus is negative. One is bubbling, another one is not bubbling. That's a very quick clinical test. Because you know that in the real life, the gram stem usually doesn't really work very well. Because you have so many bacteria there. You see all those coccyle, you can, it's very difficult to differentiate. Are they chain or are they grape shape? Because it looks very similar in the real life. So if you do a catalyst test, you will see it very quick. But there's one more thing I want to mention. The catalyst test never do on blood agar. And if you do blood agar, you will have false positive because blood agar already have oxygen there. So you can grow back here on the blood agar, then you add H2O2, of course the bubble comes out because of the oxygen there already. Okay? And that's catalyst test. So catalyst test, what are we going to do? You have one place, left side is Staphylococcus aureus, right side is E. coli. Then next week we will add H2O2 there to see which one is positive, which one is negative. Okay, the next one, the last one, we're going to talk about the oxidase test. Then we talk a little bit about electron transport chain. So number four is the oxidase test. Okay, now we're going to mention what is oxidase. This is related to electron transport chain. Electron transport chain called the ETC. Now where it is? For bacteria, it is in cell plasma. 